Talking about missions, uh, this is where we often go. Acts chapter 1, I'm just going to read a few verses to start, verses 6 through 8. I appreciate the uh, presentation about the Evans. They've been very faithful serving the Lord there in Japan. Um, he, he actually took Japanese as his university studies. And uh, when he went, he was able to already speak the language and, of course, has been there most of his adult life. Uh, they have five adult children. Uh, I've noticed four of our missionaries each have five children. Uh, so there's 20 children that uh, our missionaries have, probably a few more as well. But um, So not only praying for our missionaries, but praying for their children, uh, that God would uh, bless them and use them. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We just stop reading there. I found it interesting, uh, as, as I read this, to, to see the disciples asked him about the future. They asked him about tomorrow. He said, here's what you need to do today. <laughs> you know, it's too easy to worry about tomorrow, isn't it? And, and plan to serve God tomorrow. We need to serve God today. And you, know, you can get so caught up with what's going to happen that you forget to, to do what you need to be doing. And uh, I, I just found it interesting to, to be reminded of that. We're talking this morning about the first part of what he said to them, uh, reaching our Jerusalem. And I, I've mentioned this before in verse 8. Uh, he uses the expression, uh, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And to me, that's what makes this missions. This is not just something that he's given to us as individuals. This is the task he's given to us as, as a church and as churches. As a church, we can, we can be in more place, more than one place at a time. We can support the missionaries. Uh, we can send members. We can uh, serve the Lord here. But it's got to start somewhere. And uh, for them, it was Jerusalem. For us, uh, you know, we don't... I don't know if you've looked around lately. We don't live in Jerusalem, <laughs> all right? Um, there's probably some uh, benefits to that, and, and there's some, you know, there'd be some good things to be living in Jerusalem, but uh, we live in Stafford, or we live in Brisbane, and uh, God has called us to serve Him here and now, and uh, we need to do that. You know, local churches and evangelists and missionaries all work together uh, to get the gospel out, and it's important that each one of us uh, do our part. You know, one of the reasons that we need to be witnesses, like he says here, is because people need to be saved. And you know, uh, like some of the songs we sang today, most of the people don't even know it. Uh, they don't know they need to be saved. A lot of them don't even believe there is a God. Now that doesn't affect God any. You know, he, he still exists. He's still just who He is. But most people spend their life ignoring God. And if you talk to them, it, they, they would say, well, if there is a God, I hope. Well... If there is a God, you need to know Him. He's gone out of His way to know us. He sent His Son. God became a man so that we could have the gospel. And uh, people need to be saved. Uh, you know, the, the simple fact of the matter is that unless people turn to Jesus, they're going to go to hell. And for us here this morning, if we don't trust Jesus, we'll go to hell. That sounds very stark, doesn't it? And yet it, it's the, the basic truth. Now, Peter then began to, to preach. Like he, he said there, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you'll receive power. Well, the Holy Ghost came. And in Acts chapter 2, uh, Peter preached to them, and his message was Jesus. Acts, look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22. I won't read the whole sermon, although it's, it's a very short sermon. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. 
Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you've taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Right there, he presents Jesus and the gospel. Very, very briefly, doesn't he? But he presents, he presents the gospel. Later on, verse 36, he's kind of coming to his conclusion. He says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you've crucified, both Lord and Christ. He was talking mainly to Jewish people. They were looking for the Christ, the Messiah. He says, this is it. Jesus is Lord and Christ. And you know, as he preached Jesus, uh, you see from the, the chapter, the power of God went to work. You know, he'd said, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, the Holy Ghost had come. Acts 1 and 2 there. And in verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? God spoke to their hearts. The power of God was working. In verse 38, he tells them what to do. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Uh, basically, he told them what you need to do is to repent. Turn to God. Uh, he, he calls them, or that age, in verse 40, an untoward generation. That word means crooked. Let me tell you, we live in the same one. <laughs> you look around. Uh, it's a crooked generation we live in. Uh, that's why we have contracts. That's why we, we check on things, because uh, people will cheat. Sometimes you'll cheat. Sometimes I'll cheat if we're not careful. Uh, we live in an untoward generation. The Bible says all have sinned. Uh, you know, we're, we're born sinners. It's been a while since I've had babies, but, uh, you, you know, we didn't have to teach our babies how to sin. We had to teach them how to do right. And then we had to point them to the Lord Jesus. Uh, they needed to repent and by faith uh, turn to Jesus Christ. In, uh, in verse 38, he talks about in the name of Jesus. Uh, in, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, God sent His Holy Spirit so that He could convict us in our heart but then when we, when we trust Christ as Savior, God takes up residence in us. That's an amazing thing. Later on in, in Romans chapter 8, he says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, he calls it, you're, you're none of His. A person without the Holy Spirit is, is not a Christian. Uh, that's when we get saved. God uh, comes into our heart and uh, takes up residence. Uh, Acts chapter 4, he says, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He preached Jesus. He preached the gospel. And uh, their response was, what, what must we do? I, I've very rarely, I'd rarely had that happen when I've, I've been preaching. I have had, had it happen once or twice where someone just called out, well, what should I do? <laughs> and uh, man, that's, that's a good response. You know, we, we hear the gospel. Uh, our, our part is to respond to it. Uh, you know, baptism doesn't bring remission of sins. <laughs> baptism doesn't give us the Holy Spirit. Uh, faith in Jesus does. In uh, Romans chapter 3, we, we often read verse 23. Verse 24, verse 23 is all of sin and comes short of the glory of God. Verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, Propitiation basically means a covering, a satisfaction to God. It's through His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. It's by faith. Faith in Jesus Christ is, is what He called them to. And He said that this message is to everyone. Verse 38, every one of you. In verse 39, all, all of you, your children, everybody needs to be born again. Let me ask you this morning, a very simple question. Have you been born again? You know, not just 
Do you have an idea about Christ? Or were you raised in a Christian home? Or even have you been baptized? Have you been born again? If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, God has given us the call to go to our Jerusalem. And uh, the reason we do that is because people need to be saved. And then when, when people get saved, they need to be obedient to the Lord. You know, it, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, that means that you've made a commitment to follow Jesus. You said, He's the Lord. He is both Lord and Christ, as Peter preached. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, it tells the, the result of their trusting Christ. Then they that gladly received His word, now that means they, they put their faith in the, in the word of God, in what God had said, were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You know, that, that's just a, a basic part of Christianity. You get saved, you get baptized, you're part of a church. And here's what they did, verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Those are very fundamental to Christianity, aren't they? Uh, you know, we, we study God's Word, the Apostles' Doctrine, fellowship. That, that's talking about spiritual fellowship. Uh, unfortunately, many times when we talk about fellowship, we mean food. <laughs> that's the next one, breaking of bread. Uh, that's, by the way, not the Lord's Supper. That's talking about eating together and, and praying. Those are very basic things for, that Christians do. We do it as part of a church, basically. Uh, they believe, first of all. They were baptized. And then they continued. They are added to the church and uh, continued. Uh, verse 47, uh, he says that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And verse 46 says they were they continuing daily with one accord. Uh, they were in, uh, in unison around the, the things of, of God's word. Yeah, every Christian really uh, just needs to be baptized and an active member of a Bible-believing church. Uh, not, we're not all going to be members of the same church because we live all parts, parts of the world. Uh, man, if I went to Japan, I would struggle to be a part of a Japanese-speaking church. Uh, you know, if, if that's the only church was there, I'd, I'd join it and I'd make my effort to, to do my part. But I don't live in Japan. I live in Stafford. And uh, I, I go to this church. I'm a part of this church. And, you know, I think that's an important part of our, our Christian life. I had somebody call me the other day. And he was I interested in participating in what you might call an ecumenical thing. And uh, I, I said to him, you know, the most important group you're going to be a part of in your spiritual life is your church. And we'll do other things, and, you know, we'll, we'll participate in, in lots of things in our life. But one of the most important things you'll, you'll be a part of is your local church. And that's God's method for missions. You know, it's not just individuals going, it's individuals sent from churches. You, you continue on through the book of Acts, uh, they were ministering in the church and God called them and sent them from that, the church at Antioch there. That's God's method, uh, is the local church. Uh, it, it starts with our Jerusalem. It's also the same method for reaching Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the world. Uh, you know, Jerusalem would be our Brisbane. Uh, Judea might be Queensland. Samaria, you know, that's the hated people of New South Wales, you know, the cockroaches or whatever. Uh, you know, we've got to reach them too, you know. Even people from New South Wales need to go to heaven. Uh, and then, of course, you know where the world is, the rest, of, the rest of the world. People need to be saved. And as Christians, we need to be obedient uh, to the Lord. And thirdly, to reach our Jerusalem, Christians need to witness so that people will be saved. You know, that's just a real basic thing. And yet, it's kind of hard sometimes, isn't it? And yet, you know, that, that very word, witness, ye shall be witnesses unto me, we understand it in a logical sense, but we don't always apply it to Christian things. And if you went to court and you were a witness, you would just answer the questions, you just tell what you saw and heard and, and so on. Well, it, really, that's pretty much what it is as a Christian. You're just telling people what's happened to you. You know, the Apostle Paul, several times in Scripture, it records his testimony, usually very short. And he would just tell what he was before, you know, sinner and religious man, how he met God, how God changed him, and how he was different because of it. You know, that's, that's our witness. 
And then every day we should have something, you know, <laughs> salvation is not just something that happens in the past. When you get saved, it's eternal life. He doesn't leave you or forsake you. Every day he's with you. You know, you need to be growing in the, in the Lord so that you'll have a, a testimony, a witness of what God not only has done in the past, but what he's done for you today. You know, learning something and, and growing in him. He says there in, in Acts chapter 5 and, and verse 42, daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. It's a daily thing. Uh, every day we will, we'll probably get opportunities uh, to be a witness. The key verse I want us to look at is Acts 1.8. He says, first of all, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now for them, he had told them, you're going to have to wait. If you read verses 4 and, 4 and 5, wait for the promise of the Father. Uh, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Well, that's already happened, folks. <laughs> we don't have to wait anymore. Uh, the Holy Spirit came there in Acts chapter 2. Uh, he told them to wait. We don't have to wait. When you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. We have the power that God is, is talking about there. Uh, without the Holy Spirit, there, there is no salvation. He says, you receive power, ye shall be witnesses. Now, I don't know a lot about Greek. I, I use helps. And uh, I've discovered that that word ye, it, it's not a real hard word in English or Greek. <laughs> it means you. <laughs> All right? And uh, well, I'm on the other end of it as well. You. You, you, ye shall be witnesses unto me. Uh, this is not for somebody else. You ever had that happen where somebody's talking and you're not sure if they're talking to you or not? I, I get it a lot because I, I tend to look at people. And if they're talking to somebody behind you, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're going. Uh, well, listen, don't worry about that with the Lord. He is talking to you, all right? It's not somebody behind you. It's not somebody different, better, worse. It's you. It's me. Ye shall be witnesses Shall be, for them was future, but us, we take it as present tense. Shall be, right now, witnesses. I guess in one way you could say we're all witnesses, whether we're a good witness or a bad witness it would be the, the question. Um, in 2 Corinthians 6, he says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the, the day of salvation. Uh, we're doing it now. We don't have to wait. And he says we're to be witnesses. If you know the history of, of Christianity, you know that many of the early Christians were, were killed for following Jesus. Uh, just about all the disciples, uh, I think uh, was it, it was only John, I think, that, that wasn't killed. Uh, how could they do that? Well, the way they could do that was they had been witnesses. They had seen what Jesus was and what he'd done. One of my favorite verses on this is 1 John 1, verse 1, where he says, That which was from the beginning which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. He says, that which we've seen and heard, declare we unto you. That's why they could live and die for the Lord. They knew it was real. Like we read in Sunday school this morning. It, you know, it wasn't uh, stories that they'd heard. This is what they'd experienced themselves. They knew it was real. They, they were witnesses because they'd seen and heard what God had done. In Acts chapter 10, uh, verse 39, he says a similar thing. Acts chapter 10, verse 39, says, We are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on, on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Wow. Wow. They not only had walked with him in his life, they'd seen him die. They'd walked and talked with him after he rose from the dead. They knew it was real. Uh, they had a, a, a testimony, a witness. You remember Thomas in uh, John chapter 20? We call him Doubting Thomas, you know. Uh, he, Jesus had met with the disciples when uh, Thomas wasn't there for whatever reason. And uh, he's, when they told him, he said, Oh, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my hand in his wound. You know, it sounded... Awful what he said, but uh, Jesus came back and, and spoke to them again. It's John uh, 20, verse, uh, uh, let me see here, verse 24, I think I'll start with. Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. 
But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless but believing. Yeah, I don't believe Thomas did that. He, he answered and said, My Lord and my God. And listen to what Jesus says then. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You know, there came a, a point in history where people just had to believe God's word. God made sure we knew that this was the Bible through prophecy, through the witnesses, and, and so on. Uh, we don't get to see Jesus physically now in order to believe. In fact, if you see what you think is Jesus, be careful. Uh, the devil can appear as an, as an angel of light. God has given us his word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, we need to be careful. Uh, we need to be witnesses of what God has done. Uh, what have you witnessed? See, that's the question for, for us this morning. What have I witnessed? What have you witnessed? What has Jesus done for you? Now, be careful that you're not of an ungrateful attitude of some who say, well, God, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me today? <laughs> well, God's doing things for you all the time, but uh, we need to understand uh, God has given us life. He's also given us eternal life if we're saved. In... Uh, John 20 there when he says, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. That's us. And what a blessing that we can, we don't have to see him physically and yet we can, we can believe. We need to be a witness so that people can be saved. We don't need to physically see him, but we do need to know him. There was a blind man in John chapter 9 where Jesus had healed him. And the Pharisees wanted him to criticize the Lord and say, oh, you know, he's, he's awful. Uh, John 9, verse 24, uh, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. You know, uh, they wanted him to put down Jesus. Here's what he said. Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. He knew Jesus had done something for him. There was a lot of things he didn't know. In fact, later on, Jesus come and talks to him. He, he didn't even know. <laughs> I, I'm Jesus. Oh, <laughs> he didn't know, but he knew what Jesus had done for him. There's a lot of things we don't know, but we can know what God has done for us. Ye shall be witnesses. You know, for that to start, you must be born again. You need to know Christ yourself. He says, ye shall be witnesses unto me. It's Jesus talking. We need to be witnesses about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Paul's testimony hinged around Jesus. He would tell about his life before Jesus, how he used to persecute Christians. Then he'd tell how he met Jesus. Jesus changed his life and it made him different because of, uh, of that relationship. Uh, in his name, uh, what a blessing it is that we can, we can give testimony, we can give witness of what Jesus has done for us. And he says, then both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth, like I said, that both indicates missions, but he starts with Jerusalem. And you know, a lot of things in life hinge on starting. <laughs> There's a, a quote in, in a book about this, this lady, very proud woman, and uh, she says, uh, more or less, I would have been a great piano player had I ever learned. <laughs> and you know, there's a lot of things in life where you've got to start. There's got to be a beginning. For you to know the Lord, there's got to be a beginning. There needs to be a new birth, born again. And, and for us to be witnesses, we've got to start. And the place to start, I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I had some magical formula here, but the place to start is here and now. You will never witness tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, if you're going to witness, it'll be now. <laughs> you've got to witness here You've got to witness now. I, I, now I know there's, you can Skype people and you can, you know, there's, there's other things where you can 
You can affect people in other parts of the world. But you understand what I'm saying. He talks about starting in Jerusalem. Let me tell you something about Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, people know you. Jerusalem's tough. And God knows that. You know, it's, it's easier to go take a missions trip to Vanuatu and witness to people there than it is to talk to your neighbors or talk to your family or talk to your friends or a stranger here. Uh, he, he has a start in Jerusalem. If you read the book of Acts, just physically speaking, for those Christians in Jerusalem, a, a common result of their witnessing was they'd end up in prison. <laughs> you know, you, you read it over and over. Uh, they'd grab them and, and throw them in prison. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how it all worked. Uh, Acts 4, 3, they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. Now, that's prison. Laying hands on, uh, on them, I'm sure, wasn't, wasn't real, uh, real gentle either. Uh, Acts 5, 18, they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison uh, and, and so on. Various verses like that. Jerusalem is where you are and it can be tough. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If the Lord tarries, I think we'll be ending up in prison. We'll be ending up in prison just for basic Bible beliefs, and particularly if we share them with, with people. Uh, the Lord offends people. I don't know if you've, you've realized that. It offends people when you tell them that they need to be saved because they're a sinner. It, it offends people when you tell them that their sin is, is an abomination to the Lord. Now, you can say it the nicest way you know how. And it'll still offend them. <laughs> but you know, some of them will get saved. Can you imagine witnessing to the Apostle Paul before he was a Christian? Whew. Man, you'd take your life in your hands, wouldn't you? But he got saved. And I'll tell you what, he was glad he got saved. I've never had anybody get saved and be unhappy about it. It's only the ones who, who resist God. Uh, we need to be people who will start in our Jerusalem. Start with your home. Start with your family. Uh, start with your neighbors and your workmates. Uh, there was a fellow who, uh, he, he'd been possessed by demons in Luke, Luke chapter 8, it's recorded. And Jesus cast out the demons. He, he's called, we know him as the demoniac of Gadara, but he's not a demoniac anymore. Uh, and, and, of course, he was so grateful to the Lord. And he, he said to the Lord, um, he besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. And here's what he said to the man. Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. See, he wanted to go with Jesus. Jesus said, you go home. Go to your Jerusalem. Tell him what, what God has, has done for you. Be a witness. You know, you might say, well, I don't meet many people. I don't get many opportunities to, to witness. Well, listen, go out of your way to do it. There's a, an account where it says Jesus must needs go through Samaria. And you can show physically that he didn't have to go through Samaria. He just wanted to go through Samaria because he had an appointment with somebody. The person didn't know it. <laughs> There's things you can do to put yourself in the way. You ever been to the shopping center and you see these, usually it's men waiting for their wives, sitting on a bench, you know. Go sit down on a bench at the shopping center with a, with a gospel tract in your hand. And wait until somebody sits down and just say hello and, and just say, hey, listen, I'd like to give this to you. See what happens. You never know. I've got a surefire way you can witness to people. Every evening when I get ready for, for the meal, somebody calls me and wants to sell me something. Let me, let me tell you a question you can ask them. Say, well, well, listen, before you get into this, let me just ask you this. If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? What can they do? Hang up? <laughs> There's an opportunity. You can find hundreds of them if you look for them. And if you look around, you'll find that there are people who will listen to you. Every once in a while, there'll be someone who will say, I heard you're a Christian. What does that mean? You know, missions is about getting people saved. That's where it starts. And then those people obeying the Lord by being baptized and being part of a church and uh, those, those Christians witnessing in their Jerusalem and then being sent out. There's, there's others who go. You know, we don't all go. Uh, but some do, uh, like the Evans that we, we talked about this morning. Man, they've been there a long time now. Uh, he was just a young single man when I first met him. And you think, oh, you know, this young fella. Well, he's not a young fella anymore. His kids are all adults. 
And he's been faithful to the Lord. Um, sending and going, uh, that's all a part of, of missions. You know, the, the first question you need to answer is, are you saved? Do you know Christ as your Savior? And if, if the answer to that is yes, then are you o obeying the Lord? Are you being that witness that God has called you to be? Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for another place. Start in your Jerusalem. Some of you have, have opportunities that I will never get. I have opportunities you'll never get. You know, not everybody can go around and say, I'm Pastor Bill. <laughs> I get people call out to me, I don't even know. Pastor Bill! <laughs> That's an opportunity. You know, they expect me to talk to them about the Lord. But you're, you're in places I'll, I'll never be. And uh, God can use you just to be that light. Be, start by being willing. Continue it by being prepared. If nothing else, have a gospel track. You know, you can, you can get the gospel on your phone. Uh, I've got a, a little thing on my phone. I'm, I'm getting carried, get, getting redundant with the message. Share your faith. Now, my phone's not big enough hardly to show somebody, but uh, you can get that on. And if you don't know what to say, man, you just start that thing, and it'll, it'll tell them the gospel. And it's a good presentation. Got pictures and everything. Uh, there's gospel tracks. But you know, most of all, there's what the Lord's done in your heart. What's the old saying? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Now, if you care about them, that, that'll go a long way towards helping you to share the gospel with them. Well, this morning we're going to close by singing the song Amazing Grace. Uh, we're going to sing just the normal words and everything. I think we're going to put it on the screen here. And uh, maybe you need God's amazing grace for salvation this morning. But I know this. As we think about missions, everybody needs God's amazing grace. And uh, we can share that with them. The amazing thing about missions is you can give away all the riches of the Lord and never lose a bit yourself. Isn't that great? Don't you wish you could do that with money? You can't. But you can do that with the spiritual riches. You can give away as much as possible and you'll never lose a bit yourself. Azrael, come and lead us.